Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. God is spirit. Let us worship in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name together. Good morning and welcome to all who join us here in Chelmsford Cathedral in the heart of Essex for our Pentecost celebration in which many voices come together through the one spirit of God. We share this celebration with our sisters and brothers from Brentwood Cathedral. The Anglican Diocese of Chelmsford and the Roman Catholic Diocese of Brentwood share the same boundaries and many common enterprises. Our bishops enjoy a good friendship and we're delighted that both Bishop John of Chelmsford and Bishop Thomas of Brentwood are with us this morning to speak to us. Above all, we share our faith in the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Together with all Christians in all places, we've remembered the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. We have rejoiced on Easter Day at his glorious resurrection and celebrated his ascension to God's right hand. 
And now, on this day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, we gather, as Jesus' disciples did long ago in Jerusalem, waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit, God's gift to his people, and the fulfillment of the promise of Easter. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, and hear us with your spirit. We confess to you our divisions and lack of trust. Lord, have mercy. May the, May the Father, Father forgive, forgive you by, by the, the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit may strengthen and renew us. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our worship this morning has a twin focus, a celebration of the gift of the Spirit and a call to mission, 
to be part of the enlivening and transforming work of the Spirit in the world. We are gathered here from our different congregations to give thanks for and to rejoice in the great diversity of God's church, the many voices which share the one spirit. In this first part of our service, through the readings and the music, and in our sharing of the peace, we will celebrate some of the great variety of gifts and languages which the Spirit has given from that very first day of Pentecost to empower and equip the church. First, we hear from the prophet Joel, who speaks God's promise of an end to drought and famine and of a time to come when God's Spirit will be given to everyone, men and women, young and old, rich and poor. A reading from the prophet Joel. Be not afraid, O land. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Be glad, O people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains in righteousness. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This is the word of the Lord.
a reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were, staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one had heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. This is the word of the Lord. Bishop Thomas, since it's 50 days of Easter tide that leads up to Pentecost, perhaps you'd like to begin by saying a word about Easter. Yes, indeed. Easter is the greatest feast of the Christian calendar, and I always rather surprise people by saying that we have to read the Gospels backwards. By that I mean that the life and actions of Christ, and indeed his suffering and death, only make sense in the light of Easter. It was Easter that led to faith, and not faith leading to Easter. The Easter event changed absolutely everything because Christ was known as alive, risen, victorious. As Archbishop Michael Ramsey said, a gospel without Easter is not only a gospel without a final chapter, but it is not a gospel at all. Bishop, how does this link with today's Feast of Pentecost? Well, of course, the word Pentecost itself means 50, and today is 50 days after Easter. But it is more than a matter of numbers. Christians believe that on this day, the Holy Spirit came down upon Mary and the disciples to strengthen them. They were strengthened for their mission and witness to their faith in Jesus. Before Pentecost, they were rather timid and behind locked doors. After Pentecost, they went out and proclaimed confidently the message of Easter. That message was that Jesus' resurrection gave all human beings new hope and a new way of living. Bishop Thomas, uh, you, you mentioned the word mission. What do you mean by that? The word mission comes from the Latin meaning sent forth. The disciples were sent forth to witness and pass on the good news of the gospel. 
For this reason, today, as the Dean mentioned in his introduction, is known as the birthday of the Church. We should bear in mind that the Gospel is the one thing that can change lives. When the person of Jesus and his gospel become real rather than notional, it affects our values, our choices, our attitudes, our priorities. Cardinal Basil Hume put the same idea in question form. He would ask, in your relationship with the Lord, are you a Sunday acquaintance or a weekday friend? If you are a weekday friend, it means that the person of Jesus and his gospel, they are so real to you that they will overflow into every aspect of your life. Being a Christian today requires one supreme gift of the Spirit, and it is the gift of courage. We need great courage when in front of our peer group we stand up for the values of the Gospel rather than the values of our world. This is much stronger when, like our service today, we do it as churches together. The church needs her perennial Pentecost when we ask to be renewed in the Spirit so that the Gospel may live again in our land.
We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith as of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. In Hungarian, az Úr békéje legyen veletek mindenkor. In Spanish, que la paz del Señor esté con todos vosotros. In German, der Friede Gottes sei mit euch allen. In Bafut, Cameroon, Bonnenui, Atri, Anubu. In Greek, Irini Basi. In Irish, Shakan de Lath. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our children will now help us to share a sign of God's peace. The second part of our service reminds us of our call to mission. The gift of the Spirit is not just to the church, but to the world. It is the Spirit who calls and impels us to share in God's mission, to engage with the world and transform it. And it is the same Spirit who strengthens and equips us for that mission, to love and serve the world in the name of Jesus Christ. But though the Spirit sends us out into the world, we should not forget that the Spirit is already there before us. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. It is the Spirit who is at work reviving, refreshing, creating and recreating, constantly making possible new beginnings and renewing the face of the earth. 
The Essex-born poet Gerard Manley Hopkins calls this work of the spirit the freshness deep down things in his poem God's Grandeur, which we now hear. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. And for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest, freshness, deep down things. And though the last lights of the black west went, O oh, morning at the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and with ah oh, bright wings A reading from the Gospel of St. John. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known everything to you that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you 
and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all of the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. This is the word of the Lord. Bishop John, you have just returned from Kenya. So tell us how you celebrated Ascension Day there. We had one of the most moving experiences in my ministry. We shared in the Ascension Day service with the staff and students at St Andrew's College in Kibari. And in a service rich in love and joy and hope, we celebrated with the young men and women from Kenya and from the Sudan who are preparing to be pastors in the church. They all knew the challenges that face them in the future. They knew and loved Jesus as Lord. It was so rich and sustaining to share their confidence in Jesus as Lord and in the future. You talk about challenges. Bishop, tell us something about them and what Pentecost might mean in their experience. We saw parts of Kenya where the harvest is failing. Not enough rain and persistent drought means not enough food for the people. Global warming is having a devastating effect upon Africa. The climate is hotter, drier, making it harder to produce the needed food. And this is a result of our Western plundering of the Earth's resources abuse of the earth and insistence on holding on to our life of excess. What a contrast with the Bible's picture of the Spirit of God brooding on the face of the waters, creating new life and loving and nurturing the earth towards a future rich in plenty for all. God's love embraces all creation. Jesus is Lord. The Spirit calls us to share in the great task of loving God's world towards the future God has for us and for it in Jesus Christ. Bishop John, you speak about the Spirit of God working in the world. What might that mean for us? Well, it means for us, as for those young people, that we must never lose hope or give up on the struggle for a just and peaceful world. God has poured the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts and lives and wants us to be people who bring hope into a world where many might so easily despair. If Jesus is Lord, there is no mountain in front of us too steep for us to climb. Thinking about Kenya, we have to do something very quickly about global warming. We have to share in God's love and care for the created order. We're called to be good and trusted stewards of God's property, human life, and the world that he created. At the end of our trip, 
we visited a horticultural project of one of Christian Aid's partners in Kenya. There, Christian people were being trained and helped in caring for the soil, nurturing good growth, conserving resources and improving food production. And I thought, this is what God wants all of us to do, to be signs of hope for the future as we care for God's good earth. God's Holy Spirit encouraging us to care for God's world. Let us pray for God's mission in the world, which he has entrusted to us, his church. Holy Spirit of God, you call us to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. We pray for our complex, confused and uncertain world, for all who are seeking answers, and for those unsure even of the question. Help us to find the words and deeds that bring good news, and renew our commitment to share with others the gospel we have received. Holy Spirit, come inspire us. And fill us with your joy and peace. Holy Spirit of God, you call us to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. We pray for those who have newly begun their journey of faith, and for all who teach and learn, in churches and schools, colleges and courses. Help us to be ready always to grow in our faith and to encourage and support our fellow believers. Holy Spirit, come equip us and fill us with your truth and wisdom. 
Holy Spirit of God, you call us to respond to human need by loving service. We pray for those who are suffering on our doorstep and around the world, within and beyond the community of the Church. Help us to reach out in friendship and practical care and to demonstrate your love through our willing service of others. Holy Spirit, come refresh us. Fill us with your love and compassion. Holy Spirit of God, you call us to transform the unjust structures of society. We pray for people whose lives are blighted by poverty or debt, by unjust trade rules or immigration systems, by lack of shelter, food, health care or education. Help us join with others to tackle the causes of poverty and injustice so that all people may enjoy the fullness of life for which you created them. Holy Spirit, come transform us and and fill us with your fire and strength. Holy Spirit of God, you call us to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. We pray for the whole of creation, for animals and plants, for the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the earth beneath our feet. Help us to stop exploiting your world, to learn to tread more lightly, and to cherish its rich resources, that we may entrust this precious gift to future generations. Holy Spirit, come renew us. God our Father, as you sent your Son, so you send us into this your world with your compelling love. Help us by your Spirit to share your gospel of love and forgiveness, of justice and peace, of compassion and care. Revive your church and save your people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. For 50 days we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. Now as part of God's church in this place, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future trusting him to be your guide? Will you dare to draw closer and grow together in love? Will you dare to share your treasures and help each other in need? Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? May May the Spirit who who set set the the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost Bring the world alive with with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for sharing this special service for Pentecost with us. It's time to say goodbye from Chelmsford and maybe one day you will come and pay us a visit. Our final hymn is also a prayer and reminds us why we need to stand together. We may be many voices, but we are one 
in spirit.